And today we're going to be talking about Dashboard. I'm going to do a quick, a quick introduction uh, with some background on Dashboard and how we look at Dashboard and, how we, and, and maybe a little bit of the direction of Dashboard. And then we'll do a demo and talk about some of the features. So uh, just a reminder, uh, Dashboard is part of Robot Cloud. Robot Cloud is our hosted, managed, and enhanced uh, Casper Suite solution. Okay, so why why is there a need for Dashboard? Uh, you know, why did we build Dashboard? Uh, a lot of people, uh, especially if they live in the technology world of the Casper Suite, uh, don't immediately uh, understand Dashboard. And we built it so we could visualize key data that's essentially locked in the system, and in this case, the system of the GF software server, the JSS. There's so much information in the JSS that it's sometimes difficult to find what you're looking for or you can miss an important detail completely. And in the fast-paced world of technology and technology support, we needed to get to that information faster. So that's one of the reasons uh, we built Dashboard. Who uses Dashboard? We built it for our own support desk and there are other support desks that have found value in Dashboard. Uh, we also use it for online reporting for our customers, our clients, and clients of clients uh, because of the way in which you can log into Dashboard and see only devices that relate to your organization. That means you can share areas of Dashboard with your customers. Uh, those may be uh, the customers you support on your support desk. Those may be office or store managers who want to get more involved in maintaining devices in their system. Uh, those may be team or department leaders who once again need to know that things are operating efficiently. The, the different types of customers, uh, obviously Forget Computers is a big customer of Robot Cloud we, or Dashboard. We built it for our, ourselves. But everyone who has a Robot Cloud subscription also gets Dashboard. So if you're listening to this broadcast and you're a Robot Cloud subscriber and you don't know what dashboard is, let us know so we can make sure that you have a login. And then, of course, anyone who administers a JSS, and if you if you know what a JSS is, and you then I'm talking to you, and if you don't, you can skip this part. Uh, but that's a Jamf software server, and dashboard can connect to any JSS. Okay, a few features and benefits, and we'll do we'll do a demo here very soon. Um, but health status, it's very important for us to quickly identify is a machine in all around good health. And we do that quickly in dashboard with colors, red, uh, yellow, or green. Uh, reference and reporting I've talked about, allowing our customers and our own staff to quickly get access to information. Um, verification, uh, sometimes we have issues in our own back-end database, the JSS, that is only brought to light through Dashboard. Dashboard is, you can think of as a third-party auditor, double-checking that what we're seeing is valid. Uh, smart data, presenting data in a smart, intelligent way and, and adding additional layers of intelligence to that data is something that Dashboard's very good at. Custom groupings, uh, I'll show an, an example of that in the demo, uh, and that's something I mentioned earlier, the ability to group things and then give people access to just a, a particular or single group or multiple groups if you need to. The search is fantastic. It's very fast. It's very efficient. Uh, workload trending is something that's unique uh, where we track the workload over a period of time uh, daily for a device and look back and say, see is that normal or abnormal and let's alert on it. And of course, backup status or crash plan, all flavors of crash plan, and time machine. And then our, our most recent Zendesk integration. So let's go into the demo. And uh, first of all, uh, if you go to robotcloud.net, there's a link for dashboard, and or you can go to apple uh, dashboard.net. Uh, we, we redid the web page. There's lots of great information here. If you use dashboard or you're thinking of using dashboard, please review this website because you may learn something that, that I don't even touch on today. So we're going to go into the demo, and right away, in this view, I'm an administrator, uh, or at least I have a high-level view of multiple teams. I've got one, two, three, four, I lost count, one, two, three, five teams. I've got five teams here. Now, I could provide access to just one team. So let's say if Chad logged in 
maybe I give him access to just FC Corporate. So when he logs in, this is what he sees. He just sees his team. That's all he needs to see. That's all we want him to see. But because I'm at a higher level, I see multiple teams. And you can drill down uh, many layers with this. And, and that's a very powerful feature of Dashboard. Um, in fact, if you're an administrator, you will see an additional icon up here to add users, uh, which we do not expose in the demo. Let's take a look at this concept of what's important to us. I often talk about Dashboard and the information it collects and bubbling that information up to the top, only showing me what's important. Uh, in this case, uh, the information is right along the side here the information that I need to pay attention to. The check-in. In this case, we've got two devices that have not checked in for more than 28 days. So this one, 79 days. This one, 143 days. Those are, there, there may be valid reasons for that, but those are, that's something that your team, if you manage this uh, as part of, of supporting these devices, you would want to look into. You would want to know why are these devices not checking in. Workload. In this case, we've got one device that's critical, a very high paging ratio, and 12 that have abnormal, uh, but not considered critical, but more of a yellow, just a warning sign that these are um, experiencing abnormal CPU loads. Now, we're getting into some rather technical uh, concepts here, and we try to make it easy in all areas of dashboard with the help menu. All of our items have help menus, and you can read through this to understand exactly what we're presenting here. If you still don't understand, please let us know. We want the feedback. We want to make this, this uh, solution better and easier to understand. Uh, in our demo, we also have some storage device, some devices that are nearly full with storage, over 95% full and over 90% full. And lastly, on security, uh, and we have one device that has no passcode. Let's go into this device and look at it in more detail. This is an uh, iOS device, and I'll spend a little bit of time with iOS, and then we'll talk about Macs. Some of the concepts are exactly the same. Some are unique. In all cases, we collect the serial number, and uh, we use that serial number to provide additional links, which I'll show you in a minute. But one of the great uh, features of Dashboard is the idea that if you also administer a JSS, then you can jump straight from Dashboard directly into that device in your JSS. Now, you have to log in. You have to have privileges, and I, I did that before. Uh, starting this presentation, but here is the the backend database, uh, the Cedar Stripper iPad. Here it is in Dashboard. Here it is in the JSS. And next month, we're going to go into more detail about how to take advantage of this backend database. Uh, Jamf refers to it, uh, this access as site access, and we refer to it as the Jamf database or the JSS server. So we'll talk about that more next month. And uh, we, we list the model number, and you can immediately jump from the model number into Apple's presentation of that model to get more information if you need it. Of course, the OS version and the purchase date. This is uh, a GSX, Glo Apple Global Service Exchange account, that gets information directly from Apple. And in this case, Apple says the device was purchased on this date, and there was never a warranty. If we want to get more information, we can click on that and go to Apple's uh, check coverage page. So we can get more information directly from Apple. Uh, we've got user information if, if that information is stored in your JSS. Not always the case with iOS. Uh, we've got location. If you want to see, show me all the devices, in this case, the four devices that are in this location. And, of course, IP address, which can come in handy for support desk and troubleshooting, and the UDID, which used to be more beneficial to the support desk, but is becoming less so and even less so for developers. We'd love your feedback on whether this is even important anymore. Maybe this is something that uh, we could better use the space and present something else here. We've got check-in. We've got storage. In this case, you can see the boot disk is over 97% full. We are talking about an iOS device. Uh, it gets more detailed when we're talking about Macs. And security, there's no passcode on this device. We consider that a security risk on an iOS device. We believe all iOS devices should at the very least have a passcode set. This one is not, which means data protect is off. And then we list profiles. It's sometimes helpful to quickly identify if a device has profiles installed or not. 
And of course, I can always go into more detail into the JSS and get the information I need, but just at a quick glance, does it have profiles? And lastly, installed applications, not just installed applications, but versions. Um, always helpful to know if someone calls in because they can't get a particular app to run, you can identify if they're running the latest version or not. And that's iOS. Let's go into search, which I mentioned is, is fantastic, and I recommend everyone uh, play around with the search, especially as you, your number of devices grow into the thousands, it becomes very beneficial. Uh, and I'm actually going to search for our server, one of our servers, one of our servers that we've left in Dashboard because it's got a nice array of colors here. Uh, one of them being that we identify this as a server because it's running the server app. Uh, and in this case, it's vintage. It's considered vintage by Apple. And if I click on that tag, it explains what vintage and obsolete products are according to Apple. Uh, okay, once again, the JSS takes us right into this device where we can get more information. The link to the model, the link to the purchase date. Everything I showed you is exactly the same for Mac and iOS. When we get down to the bottom, it's a little different. We're listing all of the storage devices and how full and what their capacity is. We also list the backup status. Uh, in this case, we are backing up using CrashPlan, and the last backup was February 23rd. This is currently not encrypted. Uh, if this were a notebook, uh, that would be more important that it were encrypted. Uh, currently, we don't make a judgment call with red or yellow as far as encryption on a Mac. We haven't decided how to handle that yet because some offices require encryption and some do not. So it's not, if you don't require it, it's not really fair for us to say that's a red or even a yellow. So we haven't made a decision on how to present that other than it is presented here. And uh, memory, we show all the RAM slots, the RAM modules that are in there. And then if you want to upgrade, this one could be upgraded from 12 to 32 gigs. You could click on a link and it would take you to uh, other world computing where you could buy more RAM. So we find that helpful, but less and less important as Apple starts building computers that cannot be upgraded. And uh, if this were a notebook, and maybe we can look at a notebook here in a minute, but uh, we have additional information regarding battery health and cycles and whether your battery needs to be replaced. And finally, we have workload. In this case, uh, the server is not doing well. It has a very high paging ratio. And of course, applications. Once again, very helpful to know uh, what version of server app are we running here. Looks like we're running 2.2.5. Chad, is that the latest? I, probably not, since this is a 10.8.5 mountain. Oh, no, so. yeah, uh, Server 5 is the uh, latest. Uh, that We're just waiting for this thing to die. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just in here for the demo. Oh, I mentioned uh, battery. Let's just take a quick look at, here's my notebook, and I can see that my battery health is at 89%. I've got 169 cycles. And there's lots of uh, behind-the-scenes intelligence that goes into determining whether a battery is healthy or not, workload, and crash plan. All of these require custom extension attributes that we've built for the JSS. If you run Robot Cloud, you don't need to do anything. It's all taken care of. If you're connecting Dashboard to your own JSS, then you want to be sure to download those extension attributes that we give you. Because Dashboard will work and will connect to your JSS without the extension attributes. You just won't get that additional layer of intelligence without them. So you absolutely do need those extension attributes installed to, to get the full benefit of Dashboard. So that is a, a very quick overview of Dashboard. And I want to talk about a couple things that are brand new. First of all is the Zendesk app. And we're, we're very excited about this because this is something we built late last year and we're using it internally for several months, and then we finally made it public. I don't, I don't know if it was public late last year or early this year, but now we have a new version coming out. It's been submitted to Zendesk, and we'll be seeing that hopefully later this week. And let me give you a quick demo of what that looks like for anyone who runs Zendesk. Let's see, where's my Zendesk? Here's Zendesk. So this is a, a Zendesk ticket that I created uh, earlier this month, and if I open up the app area, you can see that I've loaded uh, the Robot Cloud dashboard, and it gives me a uh, the name of the device, an icon to represent, you know, am I dealing with an iMac or a desktop, the model, the OS, the serial number, which is very handy. I can copy that serial number and paste it into my Zendesk. And if you're running Robot Cloud, you can do this. You can paste the serial number and see all the alerting history 
for this device. You know, even if this device was used by multiple people over the years, even if this device was erased and rebuilt, it doesn't matter the serial number outside of very rare cases when the logic board is replaced at Apple. The serial number does not change, so you can see a complete history of the device right here, and that's that's very beneficial. In fact, we talked about maybe in the in the next version or future version, we could just click that and it would create the search for us automatically. If you're running the first version we released, you won't see warranty. That's new. That's what's coming in the next few days. And now we just show whether the warranty is good or bad and if it's bad expired and presented in red. And then the last check-in, you want to know if this information is up to date or not, right? And uh, in addition, uh, if this were a vintage or obsolete machine, we would show that here. Uh, so at a quick glance, if someone called in with this particular device attached to them or using this device, we quickly would know that no matter what we're doing, it's not going to be covered under warranty. And they have a workload issue. Uh, we have to investigate further why they have a workload issue. And if we need to, we can go straight into dashboard to get more information. And if we need even more information, we can, we can go straight into the JSS. And once again, we'll talk about this area in more detail next month. So we're very excited about that. And if everyone uh, who's, at, who's using Dashboard, if you have a Zendesk account, I recommend that you go get it. It's free. There's no reason not to use it. It's very easy to integrate. And uh, you can learn more at Zendesk or on our webpage. The last thing I want to show you is something brand new that we just built into Dashboard. Uh, and I want to be clear, this is not finished. This is a concept we have talked about for way too long, and we've finally taken the first step in implementing, and that is more reporting features. This is a screenshot, but let's take a look at this in Dashboard. And this is available today for everybody who has a dashboard. You just need to be in an area of dashboard that ends in slash devices. So I've got an area here of devices and I could further filter this by iOS or by Mac. So let's say we filter by iOS. I'm just gonna add this hidden feature reporting slash devices and there are my iOS devices and I can now sort by model, by software version, by age, by warranty, course location, and then security. So you can see there's some holes missing here. You can see that it's it's nothing fancy. It's very basic. That's because this is something that we're still working on the best way to present. Uh, the nice thing about this is you could take this information, copy it, and paste it into Excel or numbers and further manipulate it. It's just a copy and paste. It, it, it retains all the colors and the formatting and the cells. And of course, if you want to get more information on you know, what is this device, in this case, we know it's an Apple TV, but if we wanted to get more information on it, like the serial number, we could go here and get that. So that's, uh, that's a fantastic feature. I'll show you one more time. Let's look at Max. I'm just gonna type reporting slash and they're all my Macs. And this is something that you could show a customer. You know, FYI, we've got quite a few expired machines that are well over, you know, they're not just three years old. We've got some seven, eight year old machines here. Uh, even the six and five year old machines should probably be considered for replacement uh, this year and maybe the four year old machines uh, next year. What, whatever your criteria is, but this is, this is very helpful. So uh, I've, I've talked long enough, and I didn't even give Kat or Chad hardly any opportunities to chime in. So, Kat, do we have any questions as we wrap this up? Uh, we do. Uh, first question is, I have my own JSS. Can I use Dashboard? Yes, absolutely. The answer is yes. Uh, a lot, we, we've discovered recently that a lot of people did not realize that they could connect Dashboard to their JSS. They thought that they had to have a full robot cloud subscription, and that's not the case. You simply need to allow Dashboard to talk to your JSS through the API, and we can help you do that in a secure way. And once you've established that, Dashboard reads your JSS and presents the information just like you see here. Uh, next question, how easy is it to encrypt a Mac via Robot Cloud? Uh, well, I could let Chad answer that question. Uh, that's actually a different topic than what we're, we're discussing today. Uh, Dashboard is simply presenting whether a Mac is encrypted or not. It's not making the decision to encrypt or not. However, 
Robot Cloud does have an action that we can enable to allow your devices to get encrypted with the minimal amount of effort required. The only thing the user has to do, and this is just because Apple requires it, is you have to log out uh, to initiate that process. Is that right, Chad? Yes. Uh, if you do it through self-service, so where they kind of opt in, um, then when they go to log out, then it would start to, uh, you know, it would enable the file vault encryption. Otherwise, if file vault encryption is pushed out to the max, like it's a requirement, then the next user that logs in will be considered the first file vault user, and then they'll have to begin the encryption. You can't even log in beyond that point. Uh, okay. um, so there's two different ways. You can opt in or it can be enforced, and both are super simple. Yeah, good. Uh, and great question, even though it was a little bit off topic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, next question uh, is, I have multiple instances. Do I need a dashboard for each instance, or can I use one? Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's another good question. Currently, every JSS instance requires a separate dashboard instance. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, we have considered building a dashboard to talk to multiple JSSs. However, we just need a really good use case to do so. So if, if you have a good use case, let us know. We, we currently do not, so we haven't put our efforts in that area. But um, yes, one-to-one -one relationship today. Are there any other reporting features? You mentioned this new option at the end uh, was in addition to reporting features. So what other reporting features are available? Well, I consider Dashboard itself to be a reporting tool, um, and it's a very elegant and efficient reporting tool. Uh, it's just that we have been requested, and we've wanted this ourselves, to have the ability to view everything on one page or side by side. Uh, keep in mind, Dashboard you know, was built to show us problems, and it does an excellent job of reporting those problems, and right here they are. But when it comes down to digging deeper and talking about an entire office and, and the upgrade uh, path for an office, that's where we really wanted uh, additional reporting features, and that's why we're working on that. Uh, and we're looking for more ideas. If you have ideas on how you'd like to see information presented or reported, please let us know. I'm going to chime in on, on that answer too, though, Ben. Um, yeah. You know, n next month we are going to talk a little bit more about the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, within the behind the scenes aspect, there are ways to run reporting where you can download um, much similar information, sometimes even more, into an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, I see right. Ben, he just pulled it back up again. Again, but you know, so so there is additional reporting features on the back end that we will certainly cover in detail next month, uh, in addition to what we've shown you today. So just to quickly recap, uh, dashboard itself is an excellent reporting tool. Uh, if you want to get granular, there's that new feature uh, within the URL link. Uh, that you know we're working on. Uh, it's in beta, but obviously it's another quick way to have a bird's eye view. And then uh, next month we will go into some further detail on the next webinar and talk about reporting on the back end. Yeah, it's a good point, Kat. There's 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 so much to talk about in in the back end and all the reporting options that you have there that uh, we really need, need to focus on on that maybe even over two sessions, but. Um, I appreciate everyone's time. If, if that's all the questions we have, or that, that's about all the time we have. So I want to thank everyone again, and uh, please send us feedback on what you'd like to see in Dashboard or Robot Cloud in general. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to info at forgetcomputers.com, uh, or you can also uh, give us a call at 312-602-5345. Uh, you can reach me at my extension 5, or you can reach our support desk at extension 1. We're more than happy to help in any way possible. I'm also the client relationship manager here, so if you have any questions for me or want to schedule a time to talk about Robot Cloud uh, in your office setup, feel free to reach out to me directly uh, at kat, K-A-T, at forgetcomputers.com. Thank you so much, everyone.